All right, so welcome to section 7.2, Transformation of Exponential Functions. Today we're going to look at, we're going to focus on applying translations, reflections, expansions, compressions. We're going to represent these transformations in exponential equations, and we're going to solve some problems that involve exponential growth and decay. Things that involve investments, uh, radioactive decay, uh, comparing the power of earthquakes uh, across, the, uh, across the world. So, so far we've looked at the exponential function y equals c to the power of x. Now we're going to see how different factors like h, uh, k, a, and b affect things. h being a horizontal translation, uh, how k creates a vertical translation, b a horizontal uh, compression or expansion, and how the a value creates a vertical um, compression or expansion. So. We see this before, but just to recap, if k is positive, there's going to be a vertical uh, translation up, k of negative, a vertical translation down. If h is positive, it's going to the right, and if h is negative, it's going to the left. But be careful here, because that h is following a negative sign. Right. So if the positive comes after a negative sign, we get x minus 2. But if a negative 5 comes after a negative sign, we get x plus 5. If b is greater than 0 and less than 1, we get a horizontal expansion. And if b is greater than 1, we get a horizontal compression. Sorry about the mix-up there. If a is between 0 and 1, we get a vertical compression. And if a is greater than 1, we get a vertical expansion. So for b and, k and h, opposite of what they look like, for a and k, you know they are what they look like. So let's take a couple uh, look at a... Uh, a particular function in two different ways that we could graph these. The first one, we're just going to graph y equals 2 to the x to start with and then see how the a and h transformations affect them. And again, as we learned earlier on in the, in the course, uh, we'll deal with street. We'll deal with the stretches and compressions first, then the reflections, and then the easy translations. Now the a value is 3. That means there's going to be a vertical expansion by a factor of 3. If h is negative, uh, sorry, if h is 3, that means there's going to be a horizontal translation of 3. So we're going to start by graphing y equals 2 to the x. We've done this before, so I'm just going to go through this quickly. When x is uh, negative 1, y is going to be a half. When x is 0, 2 to the 0 is going to give us 1. We'll get these graphing here. There we go. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 4. 3 is 8, and 4 is 16. And there's our red horizontal asymptote. Now we start with the vertical expansion. Every point on that blue graph is going to get, going to get raised three times as high. So 2 becomes 6, and 4 becomes 12, and, and uh, 8 becomes 24 right up here under the word translation. Okay, so that's been vertically expanded by a factor of 3. Now, if it's horizontally translated by 3, that means I just take each point and shift it to the right 3. Draw my new graph, and I'm done. Okay, relatively easy to do if you've got only a couple of transformations to work with. You could identify things now like the domain, the range, the x-intercepts and y-intercepts, etc. Now the next thing we're going to do is look at a graph that's got more to it. There'll be expansions, compressions, there'll be reflections and transformations. Okay, And that's what we're going to do next. Now in this next graph, we're going to look at a different way of graphing the end result of a number of different transformations. For example, in this graph, we've got a vertical compression, we've got a reflection in the x-axis, we've got a horizontal expansion, and we've got a, um, a vertical translation. We're moving something down. So how do we deal with all of that and maintain um, you know, a nice clean graph? So I'm going to show you a different way of graphing if there's more involved. So let's start with y equals 3 to the x and get a couple of points on here. Now, our a value up here is negative 1 half. So when a equals negative 1 half, 
that's a vertical exp a vertical compression I'm sorry a vertical compression and a reflection in the x-axis that means whatever my y coordinates are they're going to become negative so if I had an x comma y my new set of points my x isn't going to change but my y value is going to get cut in half and it's going to get reflected in the x axis so my y value is going to become negative so it's going to be negative whatever the y value is divided by 2 my b value of a quarter works a little differently remember it's going to be a horizontal expansion everything is going to be four times as big instead of x over here I'm going to have 4x comma negative y over 2 when k is equal to negative 2 my whole graph is going to shift down so that's not going to affect my x-axis or my x-coordinates again it's only going to affect my y-coordinates so I'm going to have 4x and then negative y over 2 minus 2 now that gets a little clunky when we're working with some of these fractions here especially when we start cutting them in half so let's clean that up a little bit and I'll just rewrite that as 4x and then negative y minus 4 over 2 and you should be able to make sure by getting a common denominator that you can get from this part to this part here okay so what happens to our coordinates here on the left well if I rewrite them with this new map then negative 2 should become negative 8 four times as big negative 1 becomes negative 4 a horizontal expansion by a factor of 4 my y coordinates work the same way let's just work from the bottom here we've got 27 so we make it negative negative 27 subtract 4 we get negative 31 over 2 negative 9 becomes Neg or 9 becomes negative 9 minus 4 is negative 13 over 2 this becomes a third minus 2 so a third minus uh, negative 13 over 6 and 1 ninth so negative 37 over 18 so if I look at my x coordinates from negative 8 to positive 12 that gives me a sense of how I'm going to build my graph my y coordinates are all negative and this is very close to negative 2 close to negative 2 negative 2 and a half negative 3 and a half negative 6 and a half negative 6 uh, 15 and a half I think all right so that gives me some hints on how to graph this I'll make my x-axis up high my y-axis maybe around here and I care about the negative y coordinates here I want to go all the way down to about 16 so let's see 2 and on my x-axis I want to go out to 12 so two, that means this is going to be negative 4 and negative 8 is going to be over here so now we can graph our points negative uh, first off remember also that there's a horizontal asymptote here we've got a horizontal asymptote my graph isn't going to cross that line at negative 8 it's going to be equal to negative 37 18th that's like saying negative 2 and 1 18th so at negative 8 it's going to be really close at negative 4 it's going to be negative 2 and 1 6th at 0 it's going to be negative 2 and a half at 4 it's going to be negative 3 and a half at 8 it's going to be negative 6 and a half and at 12 it's going to be negative 31 and a half so that's about negative 15 and a half to get my graph very close up here to the asymptote it's essentially so close that it looks like it's touching I can figure out what the y-intercept is I know that there is no x-intercept I can see what the domain is and my range is going to be everything that's below the asymptote all the points that are less than where y is less than negative 2 okay so write down your points for instance 12 comma negative 31 over 2 and 8 comma negative 13 over 2 etc I won't write the rest of them but you should have four or five points probably five points is a good guideline so why don't you try this one write down this equation pause the video work out the map how are the coordinates going to change you know XY becomes what 
and then create your axes, plot your graph, and then start the video up again and see if it matches up. All right, so by now, just before I show you, you should have your map and you should have your sets of pairs. If you haven't done that yet, pause it, get that stage, and then let's move on. All right, so you can take a look at this here. Take a look at how the map changed. So, so then I just took each of my x values, which I've got listed, let's see, over here, and made it negative, subtracted 10, and then divided the result by 2 to get me those. Then I took each of my y coordinates and simply subtracted 3. A little bit more work with the fractions up top, but the rest of them, piece of cake. So from there, we graph. If I look at my x coordinates, I'm going from negative 4 to negative 6.5. So that gives me a clue as to where I'm going to graph my function, or where I'm going to create my x axis. My y coordinates vary. It looks like negative 2, close to negative 3. So I'm going to go from about negative 3 up towards 61, but I'm never going to see the 61, so I'll just go to 13. All right, so hopefully you've placed your points, and like I'm doing now, you've graphed your function. Arrow there should be showing that it's not crossing the asymptote. Arrow up here, you may find it hard to plot that point. Okay, but negative 6 and 13, it's marked here on my graph. Negative 5.5 and 1. Uh, this one here would have been negative 5. And negative 2 was negative 4. And uh, what was it? Negative 47 over 6. Okay, so I've graphed the function. It took me a bit of time to think through, think through the axes, but spend the time. Okay, get used to it. And through practice, you're going to get a little faster at getting there.